ITS Pro was introduced to us a little over four years ago, and since that time, I think we've all learned some of the benefits, like being able to use multiple maps in a single project. Pro has made 3D more accessible. Editing workflows are faster than ever, and working with geoprocessing tools in a fast new desktop app is really awesome. This year, ITS Pro has had two of the best releases since its beginning, and right now I'd like to share with you some of my favourite new features. Some of my first features are just little, but I know they will make life a lot easier for new and existing users. Firstly, we've made enhancements to the Locate tool. Not only is address searching noticeably faster, but there is also no more need to configure your map layers for feature search. Just widen your Locate filter and search for an asset, and it just works automatically. We've also got a new GoToXY widget, which works with all coordinate systems, including your New Zealand Transverse Mercator coordinates. Many of us spend a lot of time in ArcGIS just keeping data up to date, and editing your data is simple and intuitive in ArcGIS Pro. Group editing templates have been around for a little while now, and I think they're one of the most underutilised features. These are useful for when the features that you're digitising are usually accompanied by other features. In this case, a new wastewater connection to this new development would require a new connection, a new flow meter, and various nodes representing joints along the pipe. Annotation editing has also been enhanced, and as well as being able to edit annotation in line directly on the map, you can now also use the Copy Text from Features tool to quickly create new annotation across your maps. Making your data look good in ArcGIS Pro is easier with new colour palettes and faster access to different symbology techniques. Right now, I'm using one of my favourite unclass renderers to visualise this data representing an index of multiple deprivations from the University of Auckland. But I can quickly change it to a new dot density renderer which we've now included in ArcGIS Pro. In this case, we can visualise the densities of minority populations and change the renderer to one that's more visually appealing. It's also easy to create charts to accompany your map, like a histogram chart, which will show the distribution of high and low deprivation areas. Charts also honour map extent filters and selection, where we can now visually analyse patterns and trends in this data. We've also introduced a new chart type, a data clock for analysing seasonal or temporal data, like crash analysis data from New Zealand Transport Agency and the New Zealand Police. And these data clock charts reveal unexpected peaks and crashes during March of each year. In the latest release of ArcGIS Pro, charts can now also be used with raster data. Over the past couple of years, I've grown to love working with raster and imagery layers. Raster data holds so much rich information about anything including the elevation of our land, the temperature of our oceans, and of course, raster data is how we store our satellite and aerial imagery. What we're looking at here is multispectral data of the Canterbury Plains, delivered by Worldview 2 with thanks to Digital Globe. This is an 8-band image which includes red edge and near-infrared bands, which we can use to assess and classify vegetation. Without any special tools or extensions, we can use raster functions to manipulate the different bands of this imagery. And the NDVI raster function allows us to select the visible and near-infrared bands in this imagery, and can be applied to this raster, which will create a new layer that gets rendered on the fly, at map scale, and at map resolution. The newly created layer also has a scientific output that we can use with the new raster charts. By creating a new spectral profile graph, we can use the feature layers on your map to analyse the NDVI values in the raster. Values that are closer to 1 have healthier pastures, and with the power of Im imagery like this, we can quickly estimate crop yield or growth rates. We can exploit imagery in more powerful ways using the Image Analyst extension, which includes tools for ortho mapping, stereo mapping, and tools for raster math, and this is by far my favourite set of tools in ArcGIS Pro. Now to complement our traditional raster capabilities, we've also brought full motion video tools into the image analyst extension. This means you can now work with your drone imagery, 
like this DJI Phantom 4 drone video directly within ArcGIS Pro. This video was captured by Interpine, who used this video footage to measure the breakage of logs as they're being felled by different logging contractors. Full motion video works in 3D scenes too, so you can see the flight path and camera extents right on your scene. Now, if you haven't heard already, we've recently opened a brand new office in Christchurch. Kenna, Sean and myself are proud to be working with our users in the South Island and to be based in the Innovation Precinct in the Christchurch CBD. For many cities, becoming a smarter city involves authoring a 3D base map to create a digital twin of your physical world, on which you can overlay and analyse real-time data. One of the first steps in creating a 3D base map is to take whatever existing 2D data you have, like building footprints, and making them 3D. Now, let's focus on our new building which was only completed just six months ago. With the new multi-patch editing, we can use the vertices to raise the roof of the building, Billin's building to a height of 15 metres. And now that we have a basic building block, we can give it a little bit of life by using the new multi-patch texturing tool. And this allows you to load a photo that you have and apply it to any of the sides of the building. If you have some recent aerial imagery, you can also apply that to the roof. This multi-patch representation of a building is a great way to get started in 3D. However, fueled by a world of building information management, or BIM, the world is being modelled in a whole new way, and to an unprecedented level of detail. And Esri has been working with Autodesk on data interoperability and BIM workflows, which include GIS. This includes new support for Revit models inside ArcGIS Pro. Revit models like this of our own building in Christchurch include detail that we haven't really seen before in GIS. We can work with these models in some interesting new ways. At the beginning of the year, we introduced new 3D exploratory analysis tools, for example, view shed analysis and line of sight analysis. A new mode of interactivity has been introduced with a slice tool where we can peel back the elements of 3D data and view the interiors of these Revit models. Everyone, welcome into our new office and say hello to Kenna and Sean. So those are some of my favorite features in ArcGIS Pro. And whether you're working with vector data or raster data, or whether you're working in 2D, 3D or both, ArcGIS Pro is a powerful tool for desktop GIS professionals.